Hola, hola amigos, bienvenidos a nuestro canal Más Urbano TV, donde encuentras lo más urbano. We are back. Sorry about that, everybody. Oh. All right, we're back with Bright Minded Live with Miley. And I guess you can officially be my co-host. Bo, short for rainbow. Mwah. Thank you guys for bearing with us. Um, the service went out in my entire area and they were badass and got over here and fixed the problem so I could go live with you guys. We could talk about some optimism, positivity, hardcore happiness. So that was badass today. So I want to welcome everybody back to Bright Minded Live with Miley. Today is going to be one spectacular episode. Not just because of the incredible female lineup, including Reese freaking Witherspoon, Hillary freaking Duff, BB freaking Rexa, and Dua freaking Lipa. And these women have way more in common than just their middle name. The power they radiate, the love that they resonate, light they illuminate, bottom line, they are just badass. So Bright Minded is about communication, discussion, honesty, relating to each other in times of uncertainty, which brings comfort and unity. It's also about being unapologetically yourself, um, letting your identity shine. And so today I just want to ask my girl fans, followers and viewers if they have experienced their first or maybe even more than that, since some countries have been on lockdown longer than my own, have you experienced your first pandemic period? Okay. So here's the tea. A few days ago, I started my period. No tampons in the entire house. It felt like I had stocked up on every other necessity but this. And so a gloved and masked Miley headed out to the store where I was greeted with empty aisle on empty aisle. Then I got to the ghost town that they call the feminine needs section. Yeah, I repeat, this is a need. Aunt Flo is not invited. She knows we're social distancing right now, but just like all ants do, here she comes unwanted and unannounced. And here I am in a crisis with a crisis. They're out of tampons. The scraps were huge, uncomfortable, and basically adult diapers. And so again, Bright Minded is about accepting that even though we're social distancing, we're still connected. And I thought that I can't be the only one experiencing this. So I asked some other girls in my life and there wasn't one who wasn't complaining about the fact that the leftovers were either grody or too expensive and don't even think about ordering online because they're gonna charge you for it. So that's when I reached out to Lola, who believes that this too shall pass, and until it does, they're here for you. Look how cute this is. Lola, female-owned brand. This too shall pass, and until it does, we're here for you. Look at this packaging, so cute. Organic cotton, BPA-free, no synthetic fibers, no fragrance and dyes, no chlorine bleach. It's a way better alternative. And so I reached out to Lola and they had already sent out 400,000 products across the country through their amazing partner, I Support the Girls Today. I'm proud to announce that now I am partnering with Lola to donate 100,000 tampons, pads, and liners to emergency shelters right here in Los Angeles. Lola is a female founded brand that offers high quality period and sexual wellness products with ingredients that I feel really good about. So I just wanna thank you Lola so much for your contribution. And now, my first of four incredible women will be Reese Witherspoon. So, I'm gonna get Reese now. I'm doing good. I'm happy to talk to someone with usually as much energy as I do. I can just like feel your energy just coming through the screen right now. And I'm just so happy to have you on Bright Minded. Oh, thank you. I love that you're doing this. It's so great. And I, tell you, I saw you talking to your mom earlier. I love your mom. She's the cutest. My mom is the cutest. And, you know, I am a total talker. So this comes naturally to have a talk show. 
And I have looked up to you since I was little. And so there's just so much that I want to say, but mostly I just want to listen. And so I just mostly want to ask you and your family, how have you been staying bright in these dark times? Oh my goodness. Well, I definitely have like good days and bad days. I think just any kind of adjustment to a new normal is it's totally fine to feel however you want to feel. Like at first I was trying to get everything organized and go, okay, I got to do all the shopping. I, I got to get recipes. Like, oh my God, what am I doing? And then I was like, yeah. just relax. It's going to be okay. If you get nothing done all day and you just do a puzzle, that's okay. And in your situation, that's something, you know, different from mine all I have to do is take care of my four dogs and myself and but that's a lot parents, that's a lot it is a lot especially I just got a new puppy I'll show you this is Bo short for rainbow oh hi is it a German he shepherd made your major fall. a little German shepherd mix he was at a rescue and so by rescuing him they were able to free up one more space in the shelter for more dogs so I'm super oh my god that's stoked. so sweet so cute and um you know so taking care of a family is a lot of work and also I guess explaining to you know kids also the situation that's happening because I don't have much explaining to do with my dogs they actually love this because I'm unable to leave them for hours um <laughs> so what's a conversation because I know that if people watching my show it's not just all younger people but it's even like older siblings as well like having this conversation with my little sister how do you have a situation, like a conversation about this kind of, how do you have a conversation about what's happening right now? Well, you know, they're having a, I have a conversation. I have a seven year old and I have a 16 year old and I have a 20 year old. So um, my daughter came home from college. She's doing college online now here at the house. She had all this independence, right? And she was living her own yeah. life. And now she can't see her friends. She's doing online classes. And my 16 year old son, um, you know, is here at home. He can't see his girlfriend. He's um, feeling really isolated. And then I have a seven-year-old who's so happy because his 16-year-old brother and sister are home all day. But, yeah. Like, I think a lot about people um, who are coming home from college or coming home. That's a, that's a time where you are trying to individuate, right? You're trying, you have yeah. to actually kind of move away from your parents' ideas. You have to move away from their, their structure, their routine, create your own. And now you're having to go backwards. And that must be so yeah. frustrating, you know, um, to lose that independence. And I try to just be patient, you know, and they try to be yeah. patient with me. Um, but, you know, we're only on day 11. I don't yeah. know what's going to happen. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think any of us really do. Um... I was thinking about, you know, you always have great choices, whether they're like in the movies you choose or TV shows you choose. Are there any like movies or TV shows or books or music that has been keeping you occupied? Do you have any recommendations? Oh, yeah. I mean, I have like, um, like a whole list of movies that you have to see in your life, like that are really important. Like some of them, like Thelma and Louise, if you know recent Thelma and yes. Louise. It's amazing. Um, Raising okay. Arizona is an amazing movie. Yeah. Uh, we watched Mrs. Doubtfire the other night. I love <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. I have also watched Blubber. It's one of my favorites. Blubber. I haven't heard that. Okay. Overboard with Goldie Hawn is one of my yes. favorites. Yes. I can't. It's so good. The best. It. Um, and Defending Your Life is a really great movie that I really awesome. love. Awesome. Yeah. That is such an awesome list. And I'm like so stoked. So I'm going to like watch all these and it's going <laughs> to give me so much to do. Um, I was thinking about TV shows and movies and how they keep us company in times that we're alone and not just in this climate with social distancing, but during heartbreak or like even when I was a kid, I wanted to sleep with the TV on because just like the light and sound of humans on my screen would make me feel less scared of the dark. And so I guess that's why hotels usually have movies is because, you know, they, they, when you're traveling alone or you're staying somewhere unfamiliar, movies and TV give us a sense of comfort. So I guess it's that we see people we relate to or we fantasize being more like them. So it takes us away from the now, puts us into the world that's displayed on our screen. So I just want to ask you before you pick a role, do you think about that? Do you think about the audience or do you, do you pick roles like that you relate to the character or you want to be more like that character? Or maybe there's a piece of you that relates to the character that you don't really get to use in your real life that you're like, yes, I can bring this side of me out. Like, 
I'm sure you get offers all the time. How do you choose your roles? Um, well, no, I always think about the audience first. Because I remember growing up in Tennessee. Shout out, Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. Tennessee, y'all. Um, and just going to the movies and feeling like I could escape. And even if it was like super hot outside, and it was cold inside a movie theater. And I got to yeah. watch another world. And that's why I love books and I love movies. And um, so I always think like, what will the audience? I, I try not to make a lot of depressing things. No. I find like, if people have two hours of their life that they either have to get a babysitter or organize their life around, like, do you want to watch something that like depresses you or brings you down? Or do you want to watch either something that starts a conversation or just makes you happy, you know? That, that's kind of how I think about it. That's really interesting that that's your answer because that's actually kind of my next question. I was gonna tell you that I, I believe that thoughts and attention just determine how we feel. So if we're thinking sad things, we're gonna be sad, happy, we're gonna be happy. That's what, why what we're gonna choose to watch at this time is so important. Like choosing Legally Blonde over Contagion would be a much better idea. <laughs> Um, so when you feel like you're going to slide into an anxious loop, do you have any advice or exercises that you would share, even if it's just as simple as like hug one of your kids when you feel yourself going to that anxious place? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, well, I hug my kids or I FaceTime, I have like five girlfriends and I'll just text any one of them and we'll, um, we try to connect every day or I'll FaceTime my mom. My mom is the, like, she's human joy. She's just... Yeah. She reminds me a lot of your mom, too, because she just, everything, you have to see positivity. You have to create that in your life. I'm reading this really amazing book that talks about um, everything you say out loud that is negative has a 10 times effect on your body, but everything you say positive only has a four or five times effect. So think about that, like how heavy negative words or heavy expression or being around people who have negative self-talk or negative talk about other people, it just brings you down. So and I try why, to- Like, why edit. is that? I was just talking yesterday about why are bad habits so easy and good habits are so hard? Like, when you get on a good strike, of like, I'm working out, I'm eating well, you feel like three days is three years, and then yeah. bad habits just creep in, and it's so easy to have bad habits. I know. I have a- I have a, um, some chocolate chip cookies downstairs with peanut butter and they call oh, my name all day yeah, long. I have a, I have a s'mores bar in there. That's doing the exact same thing. And I'm like, I got to oh. get rid of these cookies, but they're so delicious. There's only one way to get rid of them. Well, that's true. And then I could just eat them and then I'd be done. And then they're gone. And then it's and over. Then <laughs> I see behind you that you got like your very, very cute, like stripe and different patterns. And I'm super into that. We've been talking a lot on my show about like how even rearranging a room that you already had with all the materials that you have now, just like moving a chair, like moving the table to a different space or just like rearranging things that you already have to create a new space is so important. And I know that interior design is something that's been really like important to you. So how important is it? Like, what would you say your style is with interior design? And like, how does that marry into your fashion sense and your personality like how do you make a room look like Reese well I think it's really important to designate space right so everybody we have my husband and I are both working from home and all three kids are doing school online so everybody has a room that has a little area and there's a privacy sign there so when the privacy sign is on or your headphones are on like you can't interrupt you have to have rules like every society has rules and right. it's really important to post them on the wall for your family, just um, just so we respect each other's space. Because it's just a um, you know some people I get really irritable if people interrupt me while I'm reading. Um, yeah. So I, I have to be really um, thoughtful of that. Express it not in a nasty way. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. if I have my headphones on, can you just ask me if it's okay? So. Um, I know it's just a lot, but I, I love calm space. I love blue and white. Cause I have a, I have a whole I have a whole retail business called Draper James that I would love to talk to yeah. you about female founders and what's going on with small business right now. Um, cause yeah, I've been, I would, love, I would, I would love to hear about that. We had, we talked about that a couple days ago, just about 
even a, I thought a cool idea was buying gift certificates to places that you know you're going to go when society gets back to norm. So like if you have your local salon that's female owned, you know you're getting that haircut, you know you're getting your hair colored, get a gift certificate, use it when things are back to normal because they can use that money to pay their employees and their bills right now. Yeah, totally. That That's so, um, that's such great advice. And I would add on to that, that if you have a brand that you love, a lot of their big orders from the big department stores are getting canceled and they're sitting there holding all this stuff. Um, yeah. So if you can go directly to their websites, whether, you know, that's like Rebecca Minkoff or Loeffler Randall or Doen or, you know, all there's so many of these great places. And also there's female owned bookstores like Parnassus in Nashville or Books or Magic in Brooklyn. If you can call them directly and just say, hey, can I get it from you, not from like a big brand? That might really make such a difference for these people who, you know, after a month, it's, it's really, really hard. That was like one of the first most impacted thing was um, women owned businesses, people, small business, even like a bakery. Like it's so important to support people. I agree. And that is super great advice. So going direct to the female owned shops, not ordering through larger corps or online, but going directly to them. That's awesome advice. Um, and also and there's the, thing wondering... Oh, sorry. Oh, Just, I wanted to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll follow up after this and give you a link to the Female Founders Fund so you can find all these businesses, including Lola that you talked about this morning. Just amazing female owned businesses that, you can help. You had that on your Instagram also, and you're kind of like always posting. So if people follow you, I've seen that before, so they can find that through your Instagram. Because right now, I think that's so important that we be supporting local. I did the same thing when I got my puppy. Instead of going to one of the bigger pet stores that I knew would be open later and there would be less people, I went to one of the smaller mom and pops and it ended up being like $200 worth of food and two bones and all those kind of things that it takes to have a dog. And I could just see how much that that made the owner's you know, life right now because he depends on it for if he's going to be able to keep his business open. So it's really good to support smaller businesses at this time. Um, and since we were talking about interior design, I want to talk about exterior also, because I didn't know if you knew that Madeline, Martha McKenzie, and Hannah Montana lived in the same house, what? maybe even at the same time. So there might be a plot twist here that you actually had a roommate um, that you lived with Hannah Montana. Oh, my God. I knew I knew that house from somewhere. We live in the same house. So plot twist, Madeline McKenzie, Hannah Montana are roommates. Such good vibes at that house. Such good vibes. I want to thank you so much. You're the best roommate and the best guest anyone could ever have on the show. I want to thank you for your advice. Thank you for your time. Hug your family for me. And thank you for being such a light. I love you, Miley. You're the best. Keep putting out your beautiful energy into the world. Thank you so much, Reese. Okay. Hope to talk to you soon. See you in Nashville. Bye. Bye. Well, that was cool as fuck. Okay, kept the language to a minimum with Reese. Gotta have some respect. Okay, so now our next guest, I have to breathe because our next guest, I stan. Like, I stan. Like, I stan, pre stan, stan. So, okay, I gotta cool it. The guest on this is. Okay, the next guest is on the list of reasons why I wanted to become a singer and an actress. So basically, like, my list is Joan Jett, Debbie Harry, uh, Stevie Nicks, and Hilary Duff, which I have tried to become some sort of mosaic of. Um, so before I bring on the queen of my universe, the apple of my eye, the ruler of my heart, I want to... Oh, I, before I bring on the queen of the universe, apple of my eye, ruler of my heart, I want to roll a clip. This is me receiving a call from Hillary Duff like a million years ago. I was completely shook it. Literally, I started quaking. I also screamed, holy mole. Um, and the most hilarious piece of the clip is not the fact that I have a belt over my t-shirt, which was a thing, but I was a self-proclaimed good girl. Uh, okay, guys, so roll the clip. Okay, just kidding. Uh, no one rolls the clip. I have to because this is not a real talk show. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, 
volume's low, we're going to fix it in the edit. Okay, so I am going to dial in the queen, Hillary Dove. I mean, seriously, she's like the reason that I wanted to do any of this. So I'm going to call Hillary. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm getting the same quakes like I did in 2004. Oh my God, are I'm we in? Shaking. I'm shaking. Hold on, is this working? It's working perfect. Wow, I'm so tech challenged. I can't believe that this is real. Uh, Hi, lady. That makes two of us. I can't believe this is real. I feel like you're making mountains move to make this show work right now. I'm so impressed. I literally am. It's been actually kind of insane especially with you and i both having our wi-fi issues oh spectrum um, need to come through right now come on spectrum i know same here and so it went down in my area but i'm all good but i've had so many people want to do the show because i think we're all like relating at the same time through everyone that's watching everyone that's joined we're all going through the exact same experience right now it's just really cool to hear how each person is handling this experience individually and you and Reese are kind of the first people I've talked to with kids and what it's like being like in your house. I have four dogs and that's really tough. So yeah, how's it's, it going? It's, you know what? I think um, I love that your show is called Bright Minded because we're trying really hard to stay positive over here. And um, I guess our bright side is that, you know, Matt and I, my husband, we travel a lot and we spend a lot of time apart. And right now we're forced to be together and be really present and be the only ones doing anything for our kids. And we're fully capable of doing that, you know? And unfortunately it's under really terrible, sad circumstances. Um, but we're trying to look at this time as a gift and be positive. And that doesn't mean every moment is like that because I literally want to pull my hair out being a teacher now. <laughs> especially a teacher that's suffering with no Wi-Fi, trying to like, you know, stay on top of assignments and join morning meetings. And like, it's, it's insane, but um, you know, we're, everyone's in the same boat right now. So I guess uh, we're capable and we're able, and this is what it is right now. So. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to start with asking you what you asked me in like 2005 or six. I, wait, you, did you hear us all like, we can't hear boo. Uh, when everyone was fine to do like a little poop in the front of your hair and wear a belt over your t-shirt. So 
whatever era that that was okay, that's when that call is from. And I fix it down <laughs> in the edit. Now I've got this thing working like a well-oiled machine. Like I can do my edits live. It's kind of like, like when people tune into the Instagram live of the show, it's kind of like going to a taping of a talk show. And then now we're working on like editing the episodes and making it feel more like a show. But this is my job that I created for myself because I love to work. I love what I do. I love entertaining. So if I'm unable to do it on the outside, I'll create a way that I can do it on the inside. So I wanted to ask you, because you've got so many things going on, like you got the hardest job of all, you're a mom, but you've also got a career, you run a brand, like how do you balance everything? We're getting hill, we're getting hill. We're good, we're good. It's not bright minded without tech difficulties, y'all. It's Hi. not my show without tech difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to move around my house to try to find like one extra bar, which I'm not having any success with. Right there, you also, look really, really good. Right there is perfect. This is, this is where I do my makeup, and my <laughs> arm is like killing me, so I'm going to just put it in the slot and then start talking with my hand. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on one second. <sighs> okay. Uh, uh, so so I think the, yeah, the question was just like, finding the right team, you know, over the years of all the people that like share my vision of what I want to do. And that's obviously constantly shifting just like with you. Um, but you know, my, my main job is being a mom. And so that's what like, I think, you know, that's like the main focus. And, but I also know that that's not like fully fulfilling for me. Like I have to work. So it definitely comes in shifts and it takes a lot of like scheduling to, to have my hands in as many different things as I do. Um, but I think it just comes from passion. Like I've worked since I was 12. I can't not work. That's what I was going to say. It's like, it's probably from the training that we both have had also of just having so much responsibility. Now they're different responsibilities, but doing school and being the lead of a TV show and touring. And I mean, we had all these responsibilities all the time. So we like to be juggling like a lot more, you yeah, know, like balls in the air than anyone else because we're so used to just having so many things much going, going on. on. So yeah. it's like a joke in my family that I like to like fill my plate as much as possible. And when shit seems like insanely crazy, I'm like, oh, and let's move, or oh, and let's do a remote. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, and... Exactly. <laughs> and everyone's like, that's what? Exactly I'm like, yes. Let's... Or let's get a new dog. <laughs> If it gets peaceful, it gets boring to me. So like, yeah. you gotta keep it moving. Um, so then, okay, so I was going to ask you, um, how did you decide, because you asked me on the show, how did you decide what you wanted to be? So starting from the beginning, like how did you know, because I grew up in the industry with my dad, so I watched him on stage, I knew I wanted to do that. What made you know you wanted to be like an entertainer? I think it started from having a big sister that was like a dancer and she um, she started going to this like performing arts school and when I was old enough I started going there and we, we really just went because it was a, a private school and we lived in the hill country in San Antonio and um, you know luckily my parents you know really cared about like our education and stuff so we went to um a, a private school and i think it was just like i wanted to be like her and that was what she was doing and um we started like going on a commercial audition and i think like escape not that my life was bad but just putting myself in someone else's shoes um and playing pretend i love
your Wi-Fi is getting kind of crazy. <laughs> but okay, so um, so I um, I want to say that I came to your concert when I was eleven, and I told you that I wore a plaid skirt and Uggs to the show because you wore a plaid skirt and Uggs. And from the nosebleed seats, uh, from the nosebleed seats, I was hoping that you would notice me and be like, "Hey, girl, nice Uggs." Um, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was obsessed with your t-shirt and it was bedazzled and it said Nashville and I immediately went and bought a bedazzler and I stayed up all night feeling everything that I own. And then I flew to LA like almost immediately so I could audition for Disney and I ended up getting the role, but the only reason I wanted it was so I could do whatever you did. And so really, I don't even think I gave a shit about being an actress or a singer. I was just going to copy you no matter what. Um, so I just want to say, you know, thank you again for like just inspiring me and I would never be sitting here and being able to be a light if it wasn't for you and you kind of showing me how to do that. So I'm just so happy that I could have you on the show. And I wanted to ask you before we sign off, if there's anything that your stands, your like fan club, which I run, um, is there anything <laughs> that you're working on coming out with, or you just fake focus on family like that right now, like a bunch of us. Um, so first of all, you're so sweet. And I, f I feel like I've known you for such a long time. And just to hear you say that, I mean, I feel like you have been such a bright light and you have made so many choices that have been so bold and you're an inspiration to me and to all of us and you continue to be. So, um, I can't even believe what you're saying to me. It's so sweet and so kind, but really I think that, um, you know, I'm, I totally look to you for inspiration on how to be cool and what to wear and what you're doing and all of this shit. So, um, okay. so for my fans to know, you can go from stalking someone behind their tour bus to FaceTiming them <laughs> live on Instagram. So do that. Or maybe I did. Or maybe I did it. You can go from following someone state to state on their tour to them looking up to you. So just follow your dreams. <laughs> Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, so I have a couple of things that are going on right now. Um, one is my diaper company, Happy Little Campers, and my Fem Care line, which is called Vita. Everything's all natural, and um, so really working on redesigning packaging and getting um, into all the great stores. So we're available for everyone. Um, it's premium products at premium prices, so it's really for everyone. And um, really trying to get the word out about natural femme care because girls aren't educated on that. We're just told how to deal with our periods, not what we should be putting in our bodies. Yeah. Um, and then I'm supposed to be shooting younger right now, but obviously we're paused from that. And um, hopefully we'll pick up as soon as we're all able to leave our house. I will be sending all my prayers to the heavens to make sure that happens to <laughs> Thank you for being on my show. Give a big hug my to your family. And thank you so much for being on Bright Minded. You're the best. Yay! I can't believe technology let it happen. Yes, it did. By a thread, we're hanging, but we're here. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Oh, <laughs> you guys, I'm great. Okay, so because we're going a little bit over time, I just kind of maybe think I should end this live and restart so it doesn't cut me off at an hour with Dua. So make sure you join my live again ASAP or maybe I'll stay on and get warmed. Okay, I'm going to get warmed if it's going to cut me off. I started right at 1230, so hopefully I can stay on schedule. But when these gals are just like dropping so much wisdom on me, I can't get myself to cut it short. Okay, so now... BB Rexa is up next. And I wanted to have BB because I knew that she would be unapologetically true to who she is. She would give amazing advice. We could talk about anything and everything. She is so open. She's always talking directly to her fans about body dysmorphia, mental health issues, using your art and style to reflect your personality. And she's also just pop punk royalty. So it's time to introduce B -b 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 Rexa. And here we go. BB Rexa coming next on Bright Minded. Hi. I put a filter on. <laughs> Queen 
of HQ, queen of Wi-Fi. You look amazing. You look sickening. Miley, Welcome. Miley, I did my makeup for you and my hair. Oh, I washed my hair for the first time. That's why it kind of looks insane, but that's what you get when you have a mullet. I don't know what else I'm kind of going for. Um, I love it. Thank Can you. Can I just, real I, quick, I want to tell you, you were just talking to Hillary Duff about how you used to follow her. I literally was obsessed with you. So no. here we go, you're following. Yeah, I remember when Party, I mean, obviously Hannah Montana, but when Party Music came out or the, um, when you were in the cage in the music video, I was oh, obsessed can't be with you. Oh my gosh, I, I was like obsessed. When you were like on the stripper pole at one of the awards. Yes. <laughs> well, so I'm, here we are. I'm literally obsessed with you also. And honestly, Beauty, like you were one of my biggest requests to have as a guest. Like all the fans have been hitting me up about they wanted you on the show. Um, and I think it's because they knew that we would have like a down and dirty, shameless, real conversation. So I'm just happy to have you here sipping and spilling tea. Where's my mug? You know, sips tea. Oh, how cute. After this um, quarantine, I want one. Yes, I'm going to send you one. I'm making them now. And the t-shirts. So I want to start with talking about mental health, because this can be like a super strenuous time mentally. A lot of anxiety, lots of uncertainty. Um, what do you do when you feel yourself going into that rut that once we're in there, it can be so hard to dig ourselves out of? I have been literally calling everybody I know on, uh, on uh, I just saw your mom, sorry, comment. Love you, Love you Sorry. Um, I have literally just been FaceTiming everybody that I know. Um, and I've been trying to I actually call my therapist yesterday. Um, and we did a, we did a call and, um, I asked her, I said, what can, what can we do in these times? Cause I feel like I'm being super hard on myself. Like, I feel like I'm not doing anything with my life. Yeah. And she's like, we have to just be super nice to ourselves. And the one thing that helps the most is having somewhat of a schedule. Uh -huh. even is that, that your dog? dog? My dog said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, so she said to uh, have, I don't know where my dog is. She hates me right now. But um, she told me to have a schedule. So like wake up and um, wake up. And the first thing I do after I wake up is meditate. Yeah. For like five minutes. And I am not allowed to like look at the TV. I don't let myself watch TV or anything until like 1 p.m. 1 p.m., yeah. 2 p.m. Cause I'll get, or like on my phone, like I usually want to like grab my phone. I think it's about like just forcing yourself to do things you don't want to do. Like yeah. kind of work out. Like even if you just yeah. do some apps. Oh or my something. God, I haven't been working out and I have to work out today and I'm dreading. Girl, you don't even know. Like I've been going like pasta, bread. I can't and, stop. Me neither, girl. I cannot I stop. And I'm like, stop. oh, all that's left on the grocery store shelves are chocolate, like, cocoa crisps for kids. So I'm like, oh, perfect. Girl, I have, I've been eating sugar. cereal. I've been eating Reese's Pieces every day. Like, the cereal. I'm all about cereal. I cannot stop it that's right now. Obsessed. Speaking of, so things, speaking of, like, food, and I, I wanted to know, you know, since you talk about body shaming, you talk about body dysmorphia, You've been really open about that, which helps so many of us. What do you do in this time where it's like, we can't really, you know, I love to hike with my friends. I like to work out in a group setting because it just, I'm very competitive. So I see someone else working out. It makes me want to work out even harder. How are you doing in this time of like so much time to go pick ourselves apart? Like last night before I got in the shower, I had this big full length mirror and I totally started bullying myself. Like too much time to bully me. What, what do you do in those times? Um, know that it's okay that everybody's doing it at this time because I feel like we're all, I mean, it's okay. Like, we're going through such a hard time right now. It's okay to, like, have a moment, like, and eat, like, shit. As long as you pick yourself back up, life is about balance. And I feel like I've done the same thing all week long. I keep complaining about how <laughs> I love your dog. I, I have the worst ADD, so I'm like, Whoop. No, um, but uh, I think you pick yourself back up, right? I think that, like you said, uh, you're going to go on the, you know, I, I'm going to try to be elliptical today. But I think it's about um, knowing that everybody's going through it and just being nice to ourselves. And a lot yeah. of times, one thing I've learned is that I tell everybody nice things like, oh, you look so pretty today. Or like, your hair looks so good. Oh, my God, you got so fit. And I'm constantly saying mean things to myself. Like, I'm never saying... I'm never saying nice things to myself. It's fucking weird. Like, I'll like, yeah. if I look at myself in the mirror, I mean, I guess because if you do that, it's like you're a fucking weirdo. Like, oh, you're like, I'm pretty. I'm not. But I, I try to tell my, like, 
the one thing that I feel like we never learn to do is speak nice to ourselves. So I think right now it's just being really kind to you. Like, yeah, we're going to eat like shit. We're all freaking the fuck out. We're all stuck at home. We don't know what the fuck is going on. We're all scared. We're all anxious. And it's like, you got to just be nice to yourself. Like everybody's, you know, probably eating bad. And um, if you're working out and killing it, good for you. But, you know, I haven't worked out in two weeks. I feel like complete shit. But I'm going to try to get do some stretching or something today. Just like something small to be nice to yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's I think I'm going to start small also. And with the new puppy, I run up and down the hill with taking him out. So he's enough exercise, like kind of just chasing the baby around. Um, so I want to talk about, you know, you talked about how mental health and physical health is of equal importance. And I just think that is so crucial to remember that taking care of yourself physically reflects mentally and mentally physically. Like they're just one, right? Like it's all completely connected. I feel like, I feel like, you know what, like, I, did you hear that Will Smith quote that he said that, like, um, uh, a self-love is, um, what did he say? Basically, he said that, like, you might eat a slice of pizza. It sounds so funny, because I don't follow this, but it is kind of true. Like, you might eat a slice of pizza and want the other slice of pizza really badly, but self-love is being like, no, I don't need that other slice of pizza, because I'm going to feel like I'm going to so regret it, you know what I mean? And, like, I'm going to feel like shit, or... You know, I don't know. It's just like, I think that taking care of your body or just taking care of yourself, like for me, it reflects mentally on me. Like even if I just do a stretch or whatnot, but I think that a lot of times, um, we, we also tend to focus on the physical, but we never focus on like the, our insides. And if you're not, you, you it's so important to really just, I don't know. I, I mean, that, that's such a deeper thing to go into, but they really do go hand in hand. Working out, it, when I work out, I feel amazing. Like, I feel like me, I can calm me too. Warm, you know? And it's all like I chemical so reactions. It's all chemical reactions. It's not like science, I just feel like isn't really mysterious in the way it's like, you do something good for yourself, you feel good. You do something bad to yourself, you're going to feel bad about yourself. So it's just do good things, feel good say bad things like you can make yourself you can really you can make yourself chemically feel so much like dopamine release or endorphin release even if like, you smile you, you can even treat you yourself smile. yeah like if everybody smiles right now if you just smile it actually Let's makes you it. feel better let's smile one two okay. three <laughs> i feel better i do i feel great i feel much I much better so I was wanting to ask you because a lot of people know you as like a pop star, but I remember you doing Warped Tour with my brother and you were like super punk rock and like I always just thought of you as more of like a rock and roll gal. Um, so how would you describe your style? Like is it a blend between like pop princess and like punk rock queen or like what is your style? I feel like I feel like the true me is like more um, yeah like 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 I love I love like leather and lace and like I can tell you love that too like that's where I really come from um and I think that throughout the like throughout being in the industry I kind of got that stripped away from me a little bit because like I yeah. wanted to fit into the trends and be in like this vibe and um I feel like I've slowly been going back there but I think it's like um like I like I think it's glam rock like I love glam. yeah like I love like I love rock and roll, but I love glamour. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like I love, I love some. I love what Kim Kardashian wears, you know. But then I also love like what old school rock stars wear. And it's like, could you mash both of them and create a world of it? I would love that. Like, well, I actually feel like. Hold on. I feel like you have. I have these very professional eight by tens because that's the kind of host that I am. And you just said that. Oh well, here's one of you. But I love Damn, it. you're really going all out on this, Miley. I'm so I love this you. picture. So this is like more glam, but let me get this one picture that I have. And yes, I have really creepy printed out photos of you. Hold on. I have really creepy printouts of everyone that's going to be on my show, but no one. That's can cute. See. So I have this picture somewhere in here of you wearing like. Oh, here it is. So you said that you love. Like what Kim Kardashian wears, but you also love like old rock star kind of like glamour. Like Blondie. Yeah. I feel like that is kind of this. Like you're wearing the Doc Martens, which Kim wouldn't usually be wearing. So you're like more punk on the bottom, but you're like showing. Bodies. You know why, Miley? Love... 
you know why, Molly? Like, I love your body so much, but I'll, I could never, like, have your body, like, the way that you're, like, you're just so fit. And, like, my, I just, like, it's been, it was hard because growing up, like, I used to watch Britney and, like, I loved her body. But, like, I was always just a thicker, curvier girl. And I could never, I can't show, like, my belly and, like, I don't know. I just always had, like, like just too much ass and too much thighs. You know what I mean? No so, like, such like, thing. No, but when, but like when, but like when Kim came out, like she had like those curves, so it made me feel more like, like I wish accepted. I could. Just, yeah, I felt more accepted. So I have to like, as much as I want to wear like leather pants all the time and just like a sick outfit, like when I try a lot of stuff on, especially with stylists, none of that shit fits my ass. Like none. But of it's it. all like, about gotta, the. It's all about the gusset and the crotch. That's what I do. You just put a little stretch in the crotch, do your thing. Listen, well, what Kim has done for you, you've done for so many girls. Um, my dog is chewing my eight by tens. No, but what you've done for your fans, you know, is what Kim's done for um, this generation. So just thank you so much for showing your body, being who you are, showing your truth. You're so badass, and I look forward to everything that you have coming up and coming out. I'm a big fan, so thank you for being on Bright Minded. Uh, Miley, thank you so much for doing this, by the way. Like, nobody else is really doing this at this level, and you're fucking killing it. So, uh, very thank proud you of so you. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Phoebe. You. Thanks for joining. All Bye. right. Bye, girl. Okay, so we have one more guest that I'm very excited about. And I did not save the best for last because every single woman I've had today is so incredible in their own right. And I feel so fortunate to share my Wednesday with these women. Huh. They are legends. And so it's time to wrap up the, they are all legends. And it is time to wrap up my show and bring out, well, and bite to life, the one and the only style icon, dancing queen, pop princess herself, Dua Lipa. So I'm gonna grab Dua now. Don't bite my feet. My dog's biting my feet. I'm gonna end this live and come right back because it's gonna cut me off.